Hello everyone, Squared Circle Wrestling is back with another episode which includes Saria felt miserable in WWE, Darby Allen speaks on retiring Sting, major update on Drew McIntyre's future with WWE, Vince Russo believes Stephanie McMahon and Triple H tried to get Vince McMahon out of the company, John Cena explains why Brock Lesnar squashed him at SummerSlam 2014, Chelsea Green reveals surprising ways she got her job back with WWE, and much more, you can check the complete list with time chapters in the description box below. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to our channel for all the latest news. Our first story for today looks at Saria felt miserable in WWE Former WWE star Saria made her return to the ring after being forced to retire due to neck injury in 2017. The former Divas champion is enjoying a heel run at the top of AEW after being out of action for several years. During her years in active retirement from in-ring competition, Saria was still under WWE contract but wasn't used to her full capacity at that time. A period which she revealed on the Mark Hoke show was miserable at times. She said, It's not replaceable though. The feeling that you get from something you love is just not replaceable. You can't just fill it with something else. I was doing Twitch but I was also being held back so much when I was in the WWE because they just didn't give me the freedom to do what I wanted to do. To even try and find something else that could potentially fill that void and then also, they didn't want me doing media. They didn't want me to do anything so I was sitting on my ass for a couple of years and people thought I enjoyed that. No, I hated that. I was miserable. It made me very depressed. Not to the point where I started doing drugs and drinking again because I was a lot smarter by that point but it would make me so miserable, like not being able to do anything. Next up, Darby Allen speaks on retiring Sting. AEW star Darby Allen on the recent interview with Comic Book spoke on many topics including the concept of four pillars of AEW, his four-way match for the AEW championship at Double or Nothing, and if he wants to retire Sting from wrestling. The former TNT champion told that he never liked the concept of four pillars and being part of that. He said, Honestly, when it comes to pillars, I don't like that word, because it makes us feel like we're above everyone else in the company and whoever's in the company that is riot or die with AEW is a pillar in my eyes. Can't just say four guys are a pillar. To me, that's kind of BS. I never liked that. It makes us feel like we're arrogant or we're like, oh, this company wouldn't be anything without us. The company's just fine. And anybody who wants to bust ass and show that AEW is the best, they're pillars in my eyes. So that cute little catchphrase that Max came up with you, he can keep it. This ain't about pillars to me on Sunday. It's about four guys that are from ground one and AEW gave an opportunity to show people exactly what we can do. We don't need the word pillars. I don't care about that. Darby Allen also mentioned that he is confident moving into AEW championship four-way match at double or nothing. It's closing the show and reminding people what AEW originals, like what our vision of wrestling can be, and reminding people how, you know, you get four guys in there that constantly have a point to prove. Like there's no way we won't deliver, we're too hungry to fail. So I think we're in a spot on Sunday to really show people the lengths we're willing to go. And I know what I'm willing to do, so I'm excited. No pressure on my end. I know exactly what I'm capable of. He also spoke on the idea of him retiring Sting from an ring competition. He said, No, I don't want to wrestle him, that's never been a goal of mine. My goal is to be by his side and kick ass a tag team. So whoever ends his career per se, whoever is his final match, I want to be by his side. To me, there's nothing I have to prove with wrestling in a singles match against him. So I just want to be by his side, that's all I care about. And to be there at the tail end of his career, to be a part of writing that history. Because to me, the biggest part of story is the end. People are always going to remember the end. And I refuse to let him go out on a bad note. There's nothing I won't do to make sure that man's career ends like it should end. Next up, major update on Drew McIntyre's future with WWE. Drew McIntyre's WWE contract is set to expire in early 2024, and there are rumors that he will be walking out of the company once his contract ends. Amid speculation and rumors about his WWE future, Drew McIntyre may not be going anywhere when his contract expires in 2024. Becky Lynch's deal is said to expire in mid-2024, while McIntyre's WWE contract is scheduled to end in early 2024, although WWE could add injury time to the deal to keep him under contract for a little while longer. Speaking on McIntyre's and Becky's contract, status, WrestleVotes told that they expect both talents to ultimately remain with the company. It was noted, I expect when the dust settles both of them to stay. The WWE wants them to stay you know, 1000% back to the end, let's say a percentage lower. They love them both. But, as any top flight stars, they should see what else is out there. I don't believe WWE is worried about that. Next up, Dax Harwood destroys TNA and Jeff Jarrett. AEW World Tag Team Champions Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler were given some promo time on AEW Dynamite to hype their AEW World Tag Team title match against Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett this Sunday at Double or Nothing. In the promo Dax destroyed former TNA stars Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett, 
calling them TNA rejects. If you think the tag champs are going to be a couple of TNA rejects Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett, think again. You better call the queen of the mountain and make sure you've got some job security. I'm not talking about your bitch of a wife Karen Jarrett, I'm talking about Dixie Carter. Next up, Vince Russo believes Stephanie McMahon and Triple H tried to get Vince McMahon out of the company. Former WCW president Vince Russo speaking on Legion of Raw, explained how Triple H and Stephanie McMahon seemingly attempted to get Vince McMahon out of the picture, but ultimately failed. He said, I'm being totally honest here. I feel horrible for them, for Stephanie and Triple H. I really do. But on the other side of the coin, you guys had to know Vince better than anybody knew him. And the way you played this hand was the worst way you could have possibly played this hand when you're voting for the guy not to come back to his own company. What do you think the payoff is going to be, bro? He added, this was theirs, bro. As a guy that worked for Vince, I don't care if you're his daughter. I don't care if you're his son-in-law. They've had to eat a lot of you-know-what Chris, and they've had to put up with a lot of you-know-what. You know what their saving grace was, it will all be over when he's gone. You know how many nights if must have got them through. Now, bro, he's never going. He's never going, bro. Next up, Selena Vega explains her pairing with Legado del Fantasma. The inaugural queen of the ring Selena Vega was a firm favorite with fans in Puerto Rico recently. But now she has explained the reason why WWE wanted her to join up with Legado del Fantasma on the main roster. I was like, he doesn't need me, though. He's a great wrestler and a great promo. Why does he need me? The way it was explained to me was, the group is new to the main roster, you're very known by the SmackDown audience. By putting him with you, people are like, what's this about? We know her to be the heel manager, we know her to be the heel wrestler, if she's introducing them, that means that's what they're about. It was really just to help make the transition for the fans easier to go, that's who they are. I was like, okay, since then, it's evolved so much. I didn't really do all that much talking, to be honest. It's evolved so much since now. That evolution has seen Legado del Fantasma team up with former world champion Rey Mysterio as the revived Latin world order, something that Vega thinks is a dream come true. Being with Rey, first of all, dream come true, what the hell? Eight-year-old Thea is like, what is life? Now, having Rey on our side, and having LWO be a thing again, it's crazy. Especially because Rey is like, you're the first female member of LWO ever. It's crazy. We're wrestlers in a team, not me managing wrestlers. Next up, John Cena explains why Brock Lesnar squashed him at SummerSlam 2014. At SummerSlam 2014, the Beast Brock Lesnar sent then WWE Champion John Cena to Suplex City, as he decked the Senation leader with German Suplex after German Suplex before he put WWE's then top star out of his misery with a second F5 after 16 minutes of pure dominance. Speaking not Sam Wrestling, John Cena explained that he agreed to work the squash match to ensure Lesnar ending The Undertaker's WrestleMania streak wasn't wasted. Brock is one of the most giving performers when it's his time. He will make anyone look great. I remember Brock being like, I had dinner with Steve Austin last night and we came up with this idea where I start suplexing you and don't stop and then beat you. Yeah, we both collectively agree that you just beat the streak. We ruin that if we have a 50 over 50 match. It's not my night, kid. Arn Anderson, in the back of my head, I hope he understands the influence he had on my wisdom with this. It's not my night. He continued, how do you showcase the enormity of that win? How do we not waste The Undertaker's streak? It's not just Brock winning a match, it's all those matches he had to lead up to losing. If I go out and have a 50 over 50 match where he just sneaks over, we wasted all that. If you take that unbelievable feat with another unbelievable feat, now we have passed the energy, and that is how you make someone. That someone can make others and that's how the business works, you have to be able to work together. You can survive and thrive by also being generous and being giving and working with others. Next up, Chelsea Green reveals surprising way she got her job back with WWE. Chelsea Green was released from her WWE contract back in 2020, when WWE began cutting swaths of talents and continued the practice off and on until Vince McMahon announced his short-lived retirement in July 2022. Following that, Triple H began to hire back some of the stars previously released and that afforded Chelsea Green the opportunity to resume her dream working for WWE. Speaking on Out of Character, Chelsea Green revealed how a single text message to Triple H got her back with WWE. She said, I texted Triple H, and I said, I want my job back, and he said, okay, call me, and I was shocked. I want to go back to WWE. My story is not finished. He said on that phone call, I absolutely would love to have you back. Just tell me when's a good time for you to start. At the end of the day, why are we embarrassed to ask for things? I will never understand that. I have asked to work for WWE probably 100 times and I am not embarrassed about that one bit. I have my dream job. I'm doing exactly what I want. I get to help give my family what they want. I get to feed my amazing animals and live in Florida. Why would I be embarrassed that I had to ask somebody for that, that I got it? I have no problem asking for it now just like asking on Tough Enough, and I had no problem asking for my very first tryout in 2014. When they didn't give it to me, you best believe I asked for it 8 more times until they gave me that damn tryout. Next up, WWE Hall of Famer admits Tony Khan won't let him into AEW. 
WWE executive Road Dog speaking on his own. You didn't know podcast. Gave props to Tony Khan's AEW for that success and thinks the entire business might be on the verge of a boom period. I think they've done awesome at Wembley. That's an incredible amount of tickets sold. It's just, to me, it's about business. That's where I'm at in the business. I'm not in the trenches anymore, like fighting for a spot. Now I'm on the other side of the fence and thinking about the business aspect of this. So from that standpoint, what a huge success it is, and kudos to them for doing it. I think the timing is right. I've said this before, and I say it a lot with this job especially, the three TS is timing, talent, and the team. I think the time is really good, I've said this before. It feels like there's something rumbling, and dare I say, I feel like 97, but it feels like the business is either taking off, which it has already, but it's continuing to do so, and that's proof of it. I also think they're not the first people to go global. He sold a few tickets there, we have two. I think from a lot of people, the question is, do you think they're doing better than? It's comparable, in a way, and I don't know that it is. But they're doing really well, and that's cool. Road Dog also added that he is not sure if Tony Khan will ever want him to join AEW. They got great talent over there, we got great talent here. It's obvious because they've been back and forth to one another. I think it's awesome to have competition. I think they're doing great. I think they're doing great makes us do great, too. I think it's a good time to be in the business. 3TS, time, talent. And then the team, the leadership team. Look, that's where I will get a little confrontational and opinionated. I think we got a great leadership team in place. And I think the right people are in the right spots to make the right things happen. I don't know that I could say the same for the others. And yet I have no idea how the other is run. I want to be very clear on that. I've only heard from individuals. I have no idea, I've never experienced it. He wouldn't have me, I asked. I asked him to take me to prom, and he wouldn't take me. Hulk Hogan once last match with Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania 40. WWE legend Hulk Hogan on the recent interview with the MMA Hour, spoke on having a possible final match with Steve Austin. He said, anything's possible. Me as a bad guy, as Hollywood Hogan, I could have tore the house down with him, because he was the ultimate good guy at that time. I just don't know with all this time passing, and both of us getting older and wiser that it would even make sense, you'd have to be crazy at my age anyway. I just haven't talked to him about anything like that ever, but if he would get in the ring, he would be the guy. When he was in WCW, he was with Brian Pillman, and I was so focused on getting Ted Turner's company where it needed to be. And finally Steve and I met somewhere and we started laughing about it, because we'd never even talked to each other before. And that is all for today's news. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel Squared Circle Wrestling for all the latest updates.